Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer, and this is The Road of the Record, where I work to achieve mastery of 10 games in a hunt for the best score of the decathlon. If you like what you see, remember to hit that like button. If you want to see more, hit subscribe. Let the games begin. This is Draft Day Sports Pro Golf, and I'm into week 39 of my gaming decathlon competition. And this is the third episode since converting to normal in our playthrough and let's get on with it we're reaching the point of uh, desperation cash is down to a minimum can only afford a few more weeks of tournament entries but here we are making just our second cut at the N MB Fund Pro-Am at Farmingdale Municipal. We enter round number three, currently in a tie for 38th at plus one. So par is a 71 for this course. We're gonna head to round three. We are very much in need of a decent payout. We are going to get a payout, but if we're down towards the bottom, you're basically just getting your entrance fee covered. So if this playthrough is going to survive and not require a zillionth, obvious exaggeration, a zillionth restart, but really only a second since moving over to normal, it's going to take a pretty decent placing in this tournament in order to earn enough money to stay alive for a while yet so both of these rounds count a lot so we're going to go to both so we head in the weather is light rain there's no wind and we're going to be alongside Steven Ramirez and Ashley Simpson. And as always, AI control, we head to the first tee. First shot, Steven Ramirez. We are blue. And through the first two shots, we are in a wonderful position right in the middle of the green. We will have a chance here. It's 18 feet. But it's good for the birdie to bring our score to even after just one hole. First shot is also a good one. It's on the fairway at about the shortest distance that we could possibly manage to the pin at this point. And our second shot right in the center of the green. Also makeable for birdie. Not going to be an easy one to get back to backs, but 21 feet out. And we come up just short, but it will be a tap in this time. And we're off to a quick start through the second hole. Another good one there, but whether that's on the green or the fringe, couldn't tell you for sure. It is a putt, so we were on the edge of the green. That'll be a tap in for par, so we're off to a good start through three holes. Let's go ahead and take a look at the leaderboard now with those who have started ahead of us. Of course, the early uh, takers on the day. How can you be a minus four through four? What is going on, Matt Gray? Phenomenal score for that one so far. Right, so it looks like some of the back markers uh, who just made the cut have really, really dropped off here early on. And let's see, handful of minus ones on the day so far. Ken Franklin off to a decent start at minus two. 
and a few that have pretty much caught up to us now. Uh, so at the moment, we're still in good placement. Still even. And there we are. It looks like we just played out of the sand. And that's a miss from 12 feet. That's going to be a bogey. So 12 foot putt there resulted in a miss resulting in the bogey. So the shot we earned, we just lost, and now we're playing out of the bunker here. This is a dangerous shot because we easily could have missed there. I love this double bunker. It looks a little bit like the Paradox Interactive logo. <laughs> but this is Wolverine Studios for this game, or many of my others, or Paradox ones. All right, so we make par on that hole despite hitting the bunker. Uh, that's always a good thing as we are not the best in those recovery situations. Okay, second shot. I'm not sure whether we're on or off the fairway there. It's going to make a big impact on this third shot. It was fairway. Despite that, it was actually a pretty poor shot as we missed by a lot. And then we just missed again. A considerable margin and we're already hitting for par and we're still not very close to the pin this could be an ugly ugly hole 12 feet out no good this is a double bogey for what we were in a good place there was no reason to have that many shots to get that ball in and yet that's exactly what happened and now we're gonna be playing out of the sand here again so we're gonna have another bad hole better recovery shot there as we're in a good place on this one maybe 9 to 12 feet uh, it's in okay uh, well at least we finally get one par but we are now plus three plus two on the round it's amazing how fast it can all go away a bogey and a double bogey in what two three holes we missed the green on this one. That was a nice shot. We also just added a nice shot, so we'll manage to get another par here. So it looks like the downfall has subsided for the time being. Or at least back to hitting pars. We could very much use... Haha, <laughs> there you go. We could very much use a birdie at this point uh, to get the round kind of back on track, get back to just plus one on the day. And I think this is a great chance for that to happen here. We're about six, nine feet out. Oh, cannot make it. Come on, we can't sink a simple nine foot putt. And we're going to the beach. At least it's on the fairway. Oh gosh, that third shot. It's such a short range. We should be much, much closer than that. We're 30 feet out here for par. So another bogey. No, things have not leveled off at all in this round. Drop another stroke here, going to plus four now. First shot in the rough. It's getting ugly. We're sliding back down the leaderboard. Just how far? 59th. So we're down into that area where you're like literally just getting your money back that you spent to make it into the tournament. It's definitely one thing about this game that bothers me because I would love to compete on very hard. If you didn't have a thousand dollar entrance fee tournament after tournament if you actually developed while competing in said tournaments or practice rounds. 
you could essentially play infinitely, improve slowly, and at some point become good enough to make cuts, earn money, and have a career. That was a nice shot there. And not as good as I thought. I think we're still about nine feet out. And it is a par three. Yeah, nine feet. And we miss. So the fun continues. We're, we're right down at the back of the leaderboard. Uh, so we're not going to be earning any money on this. And, that, and that's the problem. We fight and we fight and we fight and we make a cut. It's wonderful. But I'm not actually going to earn any money for having done that. And yet next week I'm going to have to pay to go enter a tournament yet again. How is making a cut? I Okay, I, I guess I'm, I'm not a pro golfer. I don't know how it works in the real world. And I assume that there are expenses that go into going to be in a tournament. You have to get there, right? Is it a thousand dollars though to go play golf in a tournament that you're invited to that you have a license to participate in? I, I don't know about that one. Like, if you were really slumming it, right? If you were just get by, you didn't have to fly everywhere. You could take a car, kind of go around the circuit like that, right? Uh, you could stay in super cheap hotels and, you know, you could, you could do freshman year college, uh, scenario and eat super cheap, right? You don't have to be spending that kind of money. Maybe that's another option, Wolverine Studios, if, if you happen to check out these videos, uh, maybe there's a... A tiered step in terms of your preparation let's say uh, and that that would actually add to the realism right Wow I am way off there uh, at least we're on the green but you know maybe there's that aspect you have varied amounts in your training and uh, and you're gonna get varied results out of that and you're choosing between training and practice rounds. But the practice rounds aren't having any effect. I mean, I can go a full year and literally gain like a single attribute point, which is incredibly unrealistic. You need some balancing on that one. But uh, this is a big one. How you don't have a sustainable model unless you play on easy is beyond me you outspend what you earn unless you're already good so why isn't there an option to spend less and be bad and have fun with a game that look at that plus seven it's ridiculous I had a birdie on the first hole, and then a bunch of bogeys or double bogeys, and now we're totally out of contention. There's not much of a point watching this last round, but I did say I was going to watch both rounds, and I didn't watch much of what happened there on the, the final holes, because it just, it got ugly. Uh, today we're playing alongside Noemi uh, Tapia and Dalton McDonald. And it's sunny, light rain. Luckily that wasn't me. This is my shot, I am blue yet again. And we do miss the fairway and the, we are for the style. This was the only birdie I had in the last round. And I'm certainly not gonna get one here as we missed the fairway. It's a decent shot out of the bunker from Dalton. Still nine feet out when we were only maybe 18 feet to begin with and we can't make it so we already bogey the first hole uh, anyway 
how there isn't some sort of option, some sort of manner in which you can come into this and flounder for years on end and train and develop and grow into being competitive into the beautiful moment where you finally make a cut and earn a little bit of money which is awesome it doesn't you don't need to change the values that you're earning and, and i feel like i need to go in and do that like i need to change the purse increase the purse why because unless you actually place near the top you earn literally nothing uh, like I said, real life, I don't think you're earning if you don't make a cut, so you don't dip into the purse, and, and that, that makes sense, okay? But how it's all negative, 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 unless you place near the top 30, how are you supposed to survive in this game? Anyway, uh, as I was saying, the, that point that I was getting to, I think there should be some sort of model here to where you can decrease the expense, right? Not increase the income, but decrease the expense. You know, one of those potential ways is you switch to a practice model instead of a training model. Okay, there's something, but the practice model doesn't get you any results. Like I said, I could train for an entire year and gain a single attribute point. So, that needs to be tweaked. Desperately needs to be tweaked. You shouldn't develop fast that way. Obviously, training is going to help you develop faster, but that costs. Okay, that's fine. Why isn't there a $0 training model? It says there is, but that didn't earn anything at all. So, there should be that working zero dollar training model that will actually develop something at some point somewhere to keep the game going. And then why there's not why it's a thousand dollars to enter a tournament I, I don't get. You, you should be able to have that cheap option you know we're, we're gonna live cheaply on the tour. So it's only going to cost, you know, say $100 to enter or $200 to be to participate in a tournament. Apply a penalty. Those are all your attribute points by 2 because you didn't get good rest because you don't have the posh lifestyle. You're just, you know, a struggling rookie on tour on the junior tour. Now that makes more sense, doesn't it? I mean, that's the point of having the junior tour in the first place and developing and working your way. That's why I wanted to do this game was I wanted to have that start from scratch and develop and grow and become something and eventually make your way onto the world tour. Nice shot there from Noemi. Miss our birdie chance. I'm at plus 10 now, so this round, despite uh, not much commentary on the first seven holes or the first eight now, not missing much in that sense as we miss the uh, fairway there. Anyway, in future updates, that's something I would like to see. See, 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 it would involve too much recoding in the game. But that's what I would like to see. I would like to see some model for this game that can actually create sustainability. Even if it's floundering for five years or ten years of just struggling to inch your way towards being a competitive golfer. If it's just purely train on zero, 
if it actually amounted to something. Because I, I trained a whole year on Zero uh, in my experimental runs trying to figure out how to make this game work on very hard. And I never gained a single attribute point. So it did nothing. And so then I tried the other, the other cheapest option, which was practice rounds. So I did nothing but practice rounds for an entire year. No tournament entries, nothing. And I literally gained a single attribute point in a full year. If I played golf every day by myself without a coach, by the end of a year, I'd be a decent golfer. Would I be ready to compete as a pro? Well, no. But could I maybe somewhat compete on a junior tour? Boy, I, I sure hope that I would develop my game a bit playing every single day. Maybe I could play a handful of times in a year and develop my game at the lowest ends anyway. Right? If you had really low attributes. I mean, I wouldn't even mind starting with considerably lower attributes than you start on here. But how it is that there's no growth, there's no development, unless you're already starting out well and you're earning big money in tournaments to pay for training, for good, for quality training. And then you get some decent stars and you grow some more. So the model in this game feels, to me at this point, like the only way to get through is you've got to be good to start with. And that's not what I want to do. That's not the purpose of this channel. If you've watched any of my other series, you know that I'm always going for the growth model, always going for the underdog, always trying to start from nothing and take the game to the end. Take it to its highest point. And I, I'm struggling to find the way to make that work on here. And I don't want to play it on easy. I really don't. But I, I, I did do a trial run on normal before taking the series to this just to see. And it did work. I, I was making it happen. So I know it can be done on normal. I'm just having a little trouble with this playthrough. I think I went maybe a little too neutral, a little too balanced. Wow, those are some horrible shots. I'm, I'm better than that as, as a golfer in real life and I only play a couple times a year actually I haven't played in the last couple of years I need to get back out there uh, I usually would go with my uh, with my dad or, or my wife I used to go with my best friend but he and I got out of touch when I went out of country for for a long time so since I've been back I really kind of I, I stuck to playing with my dad but he had some health problems and so he wasn't getting out on the course anymore Great shot from uh, Noemi there. Not from from me. I'm I'm just having a pitiful round here. Luckily, it has nearly come to an end. I'm wondering now if I've if I'm closer to last place than anything. Only a single golfer behind me. I am tied for 71st, plus eight on the day, and I'm only one shot from last place so I'm almost pulling for that at this point <laughs> as that would be about the only accomplishment that I could manage oh here's a bogey plus 17 heading to the final hole and there you go I am now tied for last So I'm very sad to say that my only accomplishment here is that I got last place.
Ouch. And, you know, after making that cut, I was a plus one. So over these final two days, plus 16. Only a single birdie in the last two rounds. Zero today. It was just ugly. Just absolutely ugly. And the winnings were, what, $200, $250 over the entrance fee? Because it's actually not even 1000 It's a little over 1000 It's about 1100 And that was a higher purse, too. That was a $700,000 purse. All right, well, the episode's not done. Playthrough's not done. I do not have another game to replace this, but I'm starting to wonder. It's just the balancing is totally off on this game. It really, truly is. I said, I, I know this can be done on normal, so. I guess I'm, I'm venting frustration that doesn't need to be vented because it can be done. I've seen it done. There you go. 1165 So I'm, I made about $150 off of making a cut. And it was hard to make that cut. It was a challenge. I've made two cuts in about 14 tournaments. And yet I didn't even earn anything. I can't train. I can't develop. It's the end of May. And I've literally added four attribute points total. It's only 50 bucks for the training round. All right, I'm not gonna watch this one. Let's see how we do. 74. Not looking good for the cut on this one, but not horribly out of reach. 70 or better might be enough. Probably not. It's Wolverine Golf Club. I think the scores tend to be a little bit lower there. So that's not looking like a made cut for this one. And it's not. Take the breath. I'm going to rest. There's no point. Alright, we are again at Wolverine Golf Club. Purse is a little better at least. 74 and 73 is not going to be enough. So if we replicate that, we're going to be in a bit of trouble. We've only got enough funds for a couple more weeks here. 77. And a 74 is not any better. Well, it's three strokes better. Pacific Ocean Lynx, 600,000. Colors Watch Championship. A 68. It's a good first round. We have a chance. Let's head to round number two. 
or in banded, along with George Smart and Noelia Cano. It's sunny, light winds. And our first round score was a minus three. It's going to be a difficult par now, 12 feet out. <laughs> and we already bogey the first hole. Like the curse of watching. on the green but still not in a very good position we're probably still facing a par about 30 feet out 24 it's a good shot Great shot there. It should be a birdie. Looks like six feet. There it is. Okay, we're back to even on the day. First little miracle. Playthrough might not be done just yet. Right down the middle of the fairway. This is our shot. Missed the green though. From there, though, it should be easy to get close to the pin, but it uh, doesn't always happen. doesn't always work that way. It does that time, though. We're within six feet. And we do manage to make par. I don't want to get my hopes up yet. It's only four holes. <laughs> we have plenty of time to do that. Great second shot, though. That should salvage a par on this one. <laughs> we, we missed a tap-in. We just missed a three-foot tap-in for par. I mean, even when I was on very hard, and we had putting levels during the experimental times that were like 40. I never saw a three-foot putt missed. Not one. Six-foot putts were missed. Three-foot and under was always a tap-in. Every one of them. From any golfer. Myself or those that I was playing alongside. Always made those. Always. And yet I've seen multiple, n numerous. I, I've missed about five or six three-foot putts now. I've never seen another golfer miss it. Just me. All right, we need this one here. As we had dropped such an easy shot there on the last hole the bogey. On to eight. It's par four. We're down the fairway here. And we miss the green. Looks like a little bear right now. See, there's the, the right eye. The hole was the left eye. There's the nose. And you got two ears. No? You don't see it? That was the ears. Anyway. <laughs> I got to amuse myself at this point because obviously the frustration's starting to come in here. I like the idea for this game. I like that prospect of developing from nothing. And 
eventually growing in. But th there's got to be a sustainable model. And it just doesn't. I, I think I might have to go in and edit something. Start a new playthrough. Back to very hard. And edit something. There's got to be a way that, like, training on zero will amount to something. That it will amount to the occasional bronze token. The, the super rare or the occasional copper token. Right? Something that helps you grow ever so slightly but didn't cost anything for example if I have golf clubs I can go in my backyard and I can train I could train for eight hours a day if I wanted working on my swing and not spend a penny and I would improve because if you spend enough time doing something, you will get better at it. That's reality. If you put in the time, you put in the effort, you put in the work, you'll get the results. There's got to be that zero option that can amount to something, even if it's very slowly. So you could have zero money and not have your game come to an end. You can keep training and keep training and keep training. And eventually, that was us in the drink, by the way. Just hit the hazard. So this is already shot number five. That was a decent putt, not an easy one for us from that distance. But we're at a plus one, so our minus three is now a plus one here on the 14th hole. This should go back to uh, even, though, as we had a great first shot there. Looks like we're about six feet out. That's in for the birdie. Much, much needed birdie. Okay, first chance. Are we in the top 70? We are 54th right now. We still have a chance at the cut on this one, despite the poor round. Chance for a birdie. It's long range, though. That'll be a tap in for par. Yeah, if anything, I think I might try to get in, figure out how to adjust things to make a sustainable model to where you can train on zero and, and on rare occasions get something. I don't care if I don't compete in any tournaments when I'm 18. Just train. Build the attributes a little bit. 19. Just train. Build the attributes a little bit. 20. Train. Build the attributes. 21. Gosh, you know, I'm finally coming along a little bit. Maybe let's go compete in a few tournaments. Oh, didn't make the cut? That's okay. We'll keep training. Right? There's got to be some way to, over time, grow into it and eventually become good enough. At a plus one, heading on to 18. I don't know if we're going to make it. 71st. That might be just enough. We're in the middle of the fairway. We're not the one that hit the tree. Here's our shot. Shot number three. It's on the green, but it's not going to be close. It should be enough for a par.
Final shot of the round, four par, three feet out. Plus one. Plus one. The question is, do we make the cut? We should be right at the cut line. And we do. We survive to make our third ever cut. Much better 71 in round number three. But if we were so low in the standings to begin with, I don't expect we've moved up much. Oh, we moved up a bit. There we are, 60th entering the final round. And a 74 here. Again, the winnings. That's what? $20? $20 more than the expense. And we were definitely not in last place. Okay, Farmingdale, this is right at the end of our funds, 75. Probably not enough to be on the cut line, but it's probably not far off. Maybe a 72 would be enough. Yeah, 81's not going to do it. Okay, back to the Pacific Ocean links. We are so close to being broke, broke, broke. 73. I think that's uh, just outside of the cut line. We need about a 71 or a 72. There's a 71. That might be just enough to again make a cut. It just missed it. So we missed the cut probably by a single shot, I would imagine. We did. We had a 73 and a 71. So we missed. We were plus two. So we missed the cut by a single shot. And we have enough cash left for a single tournament. So unless we make the cut again... We'll be finished. Ooh, I can't even afford this tournament. Nope, we're down to thirty-two dollars. That already went out. Went out last week. Well, that's it. This playthrough is kaput. It's broken. It's done. We're broke. And even though there's a training budget zero, it does nothing. I've tried it, spent a whole year training on zero, and did not gain a single attribute point. Suppose we could try to give it a shot, right? Well, I'll be doing that off camera. We'll see. Uh, it looks like, inevitably, uh, this playthrough has reached its end. We'll have to try again. What I would like to do is figure out if there's a way, if I can make a training budget of zero amount to something, even if in only a minor way, if I can accumulate very slowly, very occasionally, it wouldn't happen weekly, maybe once a month, training every day, right? But you can see my fatigue's not going down. 
and training does make your fatigue go down. So training on zero, it's not doing anything, right? Train on a budget of 500, your fat fatigue goes down. Train on a budget of zero, it doesn't carry out training. But if it costs a thousand to get in a tournament, it costs 500 to train, the only option you have left is practice rounds. Now that does take your fatigue down. But again, that costs about 50 bucks each one. So it adds up and you're not earning any money. And like I said, I can go a full year, an entire year on practice rounds and pick up a single attribute point. So I'm gonna see what I can do, get in there, see if I can make some, uh, edit this, make it playable. And if I find something, if I figure something out, tune in next week to see what happens because I would love to go right back onto very hard difficulty and have a struggle. Go a full year with zero tournaments. Go from very low attribute points to low attribute points. To go from low attribute points to eh attribute points. And just have it take time. But have it grow. Even though, albeit slowly, but have it grow. So I'm going to see what I can do. See if I can make it happen. Because this isn't fun right now not going anywhere. I'll do normal again if I have to, because I've seen it work. I've done normal. I've made it happen. I've made it work. This time it didn't. It doesn't mean it won't the next time, because it did the first time I tried it, just off camera. Well, anyway, that's going to do it for this episode. I'm Decathlon Gamer, and remember, I'm aiming for the best of the best. So if you're ready to join me on my journey, Hit subscribe and tune in next time on my road to the record. Bye for now.